Hi everybody, how's it going? Uh, so through the magic of the YouTube algorithm, I was actually served up a video the other day by a channel called uh, DevEd. And it was a video made by this guy called Simo Edwin. Uh, I've linked his channel down below. It's really, actually really cool. Um, I didn't know he existed and thank you to the YouTube algorithm for uh, showing it to me. But the video that popped up was, uh, Edwin was building a price tracker app in Python to go to Amazon and sort of look at the price of a product and check if it hits the price that he wanted to pay for it. Now completely coincidentally this is actually a project that I've been working on recently as well but just in JavaScript. So I actually decided to take the core functionality out of my app, put it in a little sort of side app to show you how I did my um, implementation of an Amazon price tracker, but in JavaScript. So for that, I'm actually gonna go into the computer. All right, so here we are inside the computer, and now I wrote this script. I actually prepared it for this video. As I said, I pulled it out of my core project and I sort of just built this little side project here. Um, I'm not gonna code it live because to be honest with you, I can't do that. I, I, can't, I can't memorize all this code and what it's supposed to do and all the syntax and I don't want to be jumping back and forth between Google Windows and debugging like so it's all here I know it works here we go um, <laughs> the main package that I use for this scraper is Puppeteer Puppeteer is a Chrome project and um, that basically uses the Chromium engine and it creates a browser window that you can automate you can tell it to click input fields uh, you can view the HTML, you can view the DOM, you can pull stuff out. So it's a great JavaScript scraping tool. Um, now I've got cron, node mailer, and .env here installed. Those are packages that are optional. You don't need those. Uh, but I will explain a little bit further down in the code why I've got them there. Um, next thing I've got is a const here using the URL of the Amazon URL that I want to target. Uh, in this case, I'm also looking for a camera, coincidentally. And I've got a target price, which is just an integer. So the first function I've got here is the scraper function. And that is asynchronous. This is where all the puppeteer code runs. And this is the actual, this is the code block of the scraper. Um, it just takes one argument, which is the URL. And it simply builds out a browser uh, object. And that's something that puppeteer builds out. And that sort of injects all the puppeteer behind the scenes code into this constant. Uh, I've set it as headless to be true. Uh, so you're not gonna see a window popping up. Um, I've then got a page object where I use the browser properties and I just create a new Chromium page. Um, then very simply, you just tell the page to go to the URL that you're providing. Uh, and then you have a result where this is where the page.evaluate function runs. Now page.evaluate goes in and it sort of just breaks down the page into its HTML. Uh, so it looks at the DOM basically. And there's three things that I want to pull out from the, uh, just from the page. I want the title, I want the image URL, and I want the price. Actually, in this one, I don't need the image URL. It's from the main project, but I, let's say I'm pulling out the image URL and the price. So on the Amazon page, I've already gone in and I've inspected the page and I've looked at what tags I need to be targeting. So in this instance, I'm looking for the product tag um, I'm looking for the image tag wrapper ID and then the image tag inside of that. And then I wanna pull out the source. So that gives me the image URL. And then I want the price string. So the price block underscore our price in a text, that gives me back an HTML string with a pound symbol of the price that I want, to, like the price of the current, uh, the current price of the, the item, sorry. Now, I can't compare a number against a string. So what I do is I take that string, I then pass it into an integer, but because I can't pass the pound symbol into an integer, I also need to go in and replace that with an empty string. So I basically strip out the pound symbol, then I turn that number as a string into an actual number that JavaScript can read, package it up in an object, close the browser window, and return the result. So I basically just return this object to whatever function is asking for it. 
A little bit further down the script, I've got a couple of things. I've got a cron job scheduler. So if I was to host this script on a server somewhere, I can basically set it that once an hour, it will go to Amazon and it will scrape the product for me and it will look at the price and it will continue my logic. I've got here the init function, which calls the scraper and sends it the URL. And here is the actual logic of the app. <laughs> It looks at the current price of the object that I've just scraped from Amazon, and it takes the target price that I've defined up here, and it just says, if the current price is less than the target price, send an email. That's all we're doing. In this send email function, this is where I use NodeMailer uh, to use Gmail to send an email. So I'm just basically emailing myself, and this is where I'm using .env or process.env because I don't want to put my Gmail login and password out there. Uh, on the internet. Um, now, obviously, you need to change one setting in Gmail. I've left a link down below of if you want to do this, that's where you need to go and change the setting. Uh, but this is the mail options object, so where you just basically build your email. And I've included in there the uh, item that I'm looking for and the price that I've just scraped if I hit the condition. And it's just a link to say, click here to go and buy it. Um, I then just build out the email and then it sends the email. So if I've basically hit this step, then it is now sending me an email and it's saying email sent successfully. Um, let me just give a little live demo of this. And let me just take out uh, the cron part of it and I'll take out the send email part of it. Um, da, 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 da. So instead of that, or instead of that if statement running, I'll just console log out the result so we can just see that in the console uh, save that open the terminal here um npm run no do i have npm run start so did i write my own script yes i did so npm run start that's now running and that didn't do anything because I didn't call the init function. Of course I didn't. So this is also using Nodemon. Um, so it's just uh, running the server in real time. Oh, I just restarted it. Even though I just got back the response I needed. Oh, and it ran again. So I've got here Canon ES250D body black. Uh, the image URL and the price that it currently is. So it's currently £495 on Amazon. Um, my target price is 450, so I'm not hitting my price. But hopefully, if I was to put this out on a node server, maybe I will hit that price and I'll be able to buy this camera body for 450 quid. Who knows? So that was the code, basically. And now uh, let's go back to the camera. So there we go. Um, I've linked the project code down below, like the link to the GitHub, if you want to go in, look at the code, pull it apart, uh, build it yourself, refactor it do a PR on it, tell me I'm rubbish. I don't know, whatever you want to do, please, the link's down there. Uh, and again, if you like this type of video, then also let me know in the comments. It's really helpful. Like, I so try and make my videos to sort of serve you guys, really. Um, if you like stuff, don't like stuff, just let me know. If you want to see more of this content, let me know. And if you're actually new to this channel, if you're new to this video, um, you should see my head up around here. If you click that you can subscribe to this channel uh, and if you want to watch some more stuff there should be a square up here with something that the YouTube algorithm is recommending to you um, and until next time hopefully I'll see you again soon thanks a lot